How can you save money when Cisco upgrades to CCNA version 1.1? Well, in this video, I'll tell you the best free learning resources for all those new exam topics. I'll give you an overview of the new version 1.1 exam topics that add content. I'm going to ignore the exam topics that change and remove content. So I'm telling you what new to learn. And I'm going to point to what is my personal favorite best learning resource for each of those new exam topics. All right, so your best foot forward, so to speak. Now the blog post is gonna to link to other learning options as well, and it may expand over time because it's way easier for me to update a blog post than it is to update this video, all right? Then in this video, I'm assuming that you say may have bought my edition one books about the older blueprint. They have covers like this. The covers don't say edition one or first edition, but they were. And I'm assuming then you're not buying the new edition, which are edition two or second edition. Notice they say second edition inside this green swoosh on the covers of those. So now we'll make one plug for buying the new books, especially if you're just getting started or haven't really started reading yet. We added content for the new blueprint. We added content for that interim set of blueprint changes. We rescoped some exam topics and expanded what we covered, and we modernized a lot of topics as well. I've got a video about that. Look in the show notes for the video link that tell you about that. All right, so enough about that. The rest of the video, I'm assuming you're not spending on the new second edition books. What do you do? First up, we've got this brand new exam topic, 25D. And because it's a sub-item, it doesn't list a verb, it just lists the nouns that you see here. Four different spanning tree protocol topics, so we need to cover those. The main item, or the main exam topic, uses the verb interpret. So you need to understand the concepts. But honestly, interpret gets into the possibility of, well, interpret by looking at command output, uh, which means you need to know verification commands. And weirdly enough, Several of these require you to understand configuration in order to make sense of the verification command output. So config and verify would be a better verb to think of for these. And honestly, I looked around for good free learning tools for those and decided I'm just gonna go ahead and make YouTube videos on them. So in the later weeks in August, 2024, I'm gonna do a series on these new exam topics. There's the YouTube channel. It's the one you're probably watching this video in right now. They'll be in the CCNA Reading Break playlist. There'll be one on PortFast, which is not in Exam Topic 25D. It's in 25C, but it's related to several of these other new topics. And then one video each on the four new topics in Exam Topic 25D. Next up, Exam Topic 28. As a reminder, we've got this blue set of words up here that expands from wireless devices only to all network devices in the scope of CCNA, and this other phrase at the end, and cloud managed. So let's think of it as two changes because of the wording. So first off, that first change, I think, opens up one topic of how do you gain HTTP access to just a Cisco router and switch? All right, so if you look at that wording, it includes routers and switches now, and it had HTTP and HTTPS in that output. And I looked around and I didn't find any CCA level appropriate great resources. Found some good ones, but not great ones. And it's a very small topic, so I decided just to teach it to you right here, right now in this video. Ready, here you go. You got a computer, it's got a web browser like your laptop that's sitting at your desk. There's an IP network and here's a switch you're wanting to manage. So you configure commands like these at the bottom of the page. You enable the web server feature in the switch with this command and it enables HTTPS, HTTP secure, by the way, which is better than just HTTP, of course. This command says I'm going to authenticate when I connect to the web server, when users do, with local usernames. And here's the username global command that defines a username and password very easy to guess password. And it include, includes this keyword you probably haven't seen before that says privilege 15. Now, privilege level 15 is a way to tell iOS, I want this user when they log in to be in privilege level 15, which is the same as privileged mode or enable mode if you prefer. So this user, when they log in, Wendell, um, they'll be quote, in enable mode and have all the power 
that they would want to have available. So just these three commands, plus the switch needs to have its IP settings configured. So that's the config. You can memorize the style of those. And what does that enable? You can connect with the web browser to the switch and configure it and verify and that kind of thing. Here's a screenshot of what you see on a Cisco 9200L router right now. It's got a dashboard. It's got a menu over on the left. I believe that would be 9200 switch, by the way. Sorry about that. And here are the switch ports with green and orange colors for them being up and at different speeds, gray when they're not up, that kind of thing. Now, you might look at this and think, oh my goodness, I've got to start memorizing a lot about the user interface. No. The way the exam topic is wording, it's about describing all this. So if you get the basic idea, that's great. This user interface differs from Cisco iOS version and Cisco models and device types. So they're not asking you to know the trivia of every detail of what you might see in this web interface, just to get the idea that, hey, yeah, you can use a web browser to connect to a Cisco router or switch to configure it and to verify. For instance, if you go over here to the configuration tab, you'll get a list of some of those same familiar things like spanning tree, ethernet, VLANs that you might want to configure. And we've done that with the CLI before, but here you could do it from this web user interface. So it's kind of a cool tool. If you have some real gear in lab, you definitely want to go configure and play around and experience this. Uh, in my latest testing, Cisco Packet Tracer doesn't support this. Now the second phrasing change in exam topic 2.8, it opens up the possibility of Meraki. All right, so what is Meraki? It is a cloud managed service and devices. So cameras, switches, wireless APs, routers, and the like, where instead of connecting to the CLI of every device and configuring them, you connect to a web portal in the cloud, and all your configuration happens there. That configuration gets loaded down into to the devices at your various sites, and they operate independently of the portal once they're configured, but the configuration and management process happens with this cloud-managed service. So I looked around for some tools for that, and I found this YouTuber. That's their handle on YouTube. And in the description, I've got links to a couple of the videos that I think are spot on. This fellow does a great job of describing Meraki, but he's got a good style, and he's got a couple of videos that are the right level for what you need for CCNA. Artificial intelligence makes it to Cisco certifications, and they start in CCNA. Yeah, amazing, huh? So they happened to delete the old exam topic 6.4, so they used the same number and put these words in, explain AI, two types, and machine learning in network operations. All right, so you got to sift through that and get an idea of what's what there. So it's, it's very much a general look at it. So if you can define what generative AI is and predictive AI is and understand how machine learning is really a subset of AI and those relationships and know, you know a handful of terms related to that, you're probably good. And there's this phrase in network operations, which gives us maybe a need to think about, well, how could I apply AI in the Cisco world? All right, so that's kind of the gist of what's here. So I picked not one favorite, but two favorite. So first off, I got my buddy and CCNA co-author, Jason Gooley, to agree to make us a video on AI. He wrote the AI content in the new books. Uh, so it'll be on my channel, and he's made a video, AI and ML, for CCNA. That'll be out probably the same week as this video. So I'm going to probably release this video first and then do... Um, the AI video, and then do the series of STP videos that I mentioned earlier. All right, so that's a great resource. At the same time, the folks at Cisco U, which is a free and paid learning resource, they have a free AI tutorial that probably take you 45 minutes to do that if I said, please make me a tutorial about CCNA level AI, it, it would be that. All right, so uh, definitely you want to go there and look for the course or tutorial. Name that. Again, it's linked at my blog post page, so you can go straight to it. So 
So exam topic 6.5 has been around a while. It's about REST APIs, and they added this phrase authentication types, and I, I think they thought of it more. It's an oversight. It, sh it should have been there from the beginning. It's kind of like, oh, you've got to authenticate before you can log in. You know, you, you log in before you can do commands on a Cisco switch or router. Well, of course, you authenticate an API before you can use it, right? So they wanted to complete the story. It's content-wise probably tiny in terms of exam and blueprint change though but it's there and if you would like to learn something about it i looked around for great resources and honestly i didn't find great free already available resources that were ccna level it was hard to find i found tons of resources but oftentimes they went too far so here's the current favorite when i made this video and my favorite listed on the blog page. If I find a better one, I'll list it there, all right, honestly. But here's a more memorable link that you could type or you could go to the blog page and click one. My goal was to find something that explained REST authentication without getting too complex. And, and this one's actually really, really good to that end. It's just not perfect. Now, I did also check Cisco's DevNet site, developer.cisco.com, and there wasn't really a good balanced um, lab or tutorial that was just on REST authentication. There were lots and lots of resources for which authentication was a tiny piece of it. So um, that's the, the best one I can point you to right now. Last up, exam topic 6.6. .6. It's the one where we had Puppet and Chef before, and now it replaces those with Terraform. And what does that do for us? Well, turns out to learn it, if I had ordered up, say, a Cisco Live presentation that was CCNA level comparing Ansible and Terraform, uh, there is one. So it's about 45 minutes. It's titled DevOps Tools Fight for Relevance. It's kind of a catchy title. I sat there uh, in the space at Cisco Live in June 2024 and listened to Adrian deliver it. It's a wonderful session. So there's the session number. And it basically takes you through Ansible, gives you the features, and then compares Ansible to Terraform. And that's perfect for what we need for the exam topic. So you can go to the blog site and click the link to find it. Or if you just go to the Cisco Live site, even to the on-demand part of the site, um, you can, if you don't have a login yet, you can establish one. It's free and search on DevNet 1280 and you'll find the session and you can watch it. So what else should you learn? Well, I gave you my six favorite things to point you to for the new content. There were five exam topics that changed, and one of those really was two changes all within one exam topic. But there was a time way back toward the end of 2022 when Cisco changed the blueprint. They didn't announce it. They weren't being malicious or tricky or anything. Most of the changes were just changes of the wording that honestly didn't change the meaning. But a few of the wording changes, in my humble opinion, changed the meaning and expanded the meaning of the exam topics. And more importantly, they expanded the meaning beyond what I had covered in the edition one books that came out toward the end of 2020. So between the original blueprint that existed when the books most recently revised for edition one and this interim blueprint update, there was a difference, so I needed to do something about that. And we created some content based on those changes. So when we just talked about for the last five or 10 minutes, some free learning resources, those are for blueprint changes that happened between this interim update and 2024 over here. But what about this content? What if you have my edition one books? Well, I just told you how to study for the new topics over here. How do you study for the new topics that got added or changed, if you will, in this interim update toward the end of 2022? And here's the deal. We created some content, me. I, I created it, and we put it in PDFs, and it's free download to anybody that owns the Edition 1 books. Notice there's no green swoosh on these covers. So if you look in Appendix B of those books, those are called Exam Update. They give you instructions on how to go to the Cisco Press website and download the free content. It is a different Appendix B for each volume, so make sure you download each. Read the content, learn it, be ready for the test. Unsurprisingly, the content in these is integrated into the new editions of the books. So if you buy the new books, you've already got all that integrated in. 
All right, last thing, what else should you learn? This is gonna happen again, this idea of the blueprint changing. Cisco examines every exam in the portfolio annually now. It's called their CERT Roadmap Program. Here is their easy to remember URL. You should bookmark that. And you should know this timing for CCNA. Every year during their fiscal third quarter, third quarter of fiscal year, which is weirdly February through April, they, unbeknownst to us, they tell us they're doing it, but they don't tell us what they're saying. They do an internal review to decide if they're going to change CCNA, and they announce it to the public by publishing a blueprint between May and July. So whenever you're watching this video, next May through July, there could be an announcement of a new blueprint. This could literally happen every year, all right? So you need to be watching for it. Then the exam would release either three months later or six months later, depending on whether the change was minor or major. Here's the link to hear from Cisco about those details. And here's the link to hear from Cisco Press about those. And in case you didn't know, Cisco Press is not Cisco. Cisco Press is a brand created by the publisher Pearson via an agreement with Cisco. So the publisher publishes information about their new titles here, Cisco about the exams there. Hey, thanks for hanging around to the end. If you haven't already, please subscribe. That's helpful to me and hopefully helpful to you for future videos. Click the bell to let YouTube know how much you want to receive. And as always, clicking like is probably the best thing you can do to help me out here on the channel. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I'll talk to you soon.